Welcome everyone to the first section of our agenda on climate risk and opportunity, financial stability and reporting. So in this section, we're going to explore the fundamentals of why climate risk is important for business and how that feeds through to disclosures. So as we all know, the case for action on climate change is becoming increasingly urgent. Already to date, humans have caused over one degree of warming since pre-industrial times. Um, as shown in the latest IPCC assessment report released in August 2021. Um, and then actually warming of 1.5 degrees could be reached as early as 2030 at the current rate of emissions. So clearly it's really important that organisations are taking action on this and as a society we're taking steps to avoid some of the worst impacts of climate change that we could see under these warming scenarios. And following on from this, we're also seeing growing societal and business concern around climate change in particular. You'll see here a selection of news stories showing really how global coverage and understanding of the impacts of climate change continues to grow. And this is also feeding through to the business sphere, with businesses increasingly seeing that climate change will have real and tangible impacts on their business performance. So increasingly, we're seeing that this is feeding through to global and systemic understandings of risk as well. In 2021, for the fourth year in a row, the World Economic Forum identified environmental and climate risks as some of the top three risks globally in terms of importance. So it's really clear to see that we're increasingly seeing climate change feeding through as one of the top issues that businesses must address, and that this increasingly is feeding through to the stability of the financial and economic system as a whole. So this is what has really led then to the focus on climate change as a financial stability issue in particular. This was originating from Mark Carney's Breaking the Tragedy of the Horizon speech back in 2015, when he was the governor of the Bank of England. And this was really a landmark moment in recognising the importance of climate change from a financial stability perspective. And Mark Carney pointed out in his speech that the current horizons for financial policy were often only perhaps two to three years ahead. Um, but that actually for climate change, the time horizons at which the impacts would be felt, which were far more longer term, were not within current business and financial planning horizons, which would mean that the actions that we need to take now on climate change wouldn't happen before it's too late. And this really then paved the way for the establishment of the TCFD to start to try and address this issue. And so the focus then from since the launch of the TCFD has really been about understanding climate related risks and climate related opportunities. So climate related risks refer to the physical impacts of climate change, but also the transitional impacts that businesses might see relating to changes, for example, in policy and regulation. So both of these aspects are really important for businesses to consider when they start to consider what the financial impacts of climate change may be for their organisations. So some of the examples that we see on the screen here um, give you an indication of the sorts of topics that businesses may want to consider when it comes to climate risks. They may see impacts on the value of their assets through potential extreme or uh, chronic weather changes. They might experience increased costs or reduced demand for products and services as a result of changing consumer preferences or changes in the availability of the raw materials that they rely on. They also might experience potential fines and penalties relating from emissions regulations for which they would need to, to build liabilities into their financial planning. And finally, they might also expect to see changes in their credit losses for loans and financial assets, whether in the, the financial services industry. It's also important to acknowledge, however, that there are climate related opportunities for businesses as well. And that's an important part of the TCFT framing is that businesses are identifying and capitalising on these opportunities, as well as managing the risks. Here are a few examples of potential opportunities that businesses could see. They might be able to achieve growth and innovation through developing new products and services to respond to the low carbon transition. They also might be able to reduce their costs through improving their efficiency of using energy and resources. Addressing climate risks and capitalising opportunities can also improve their relationship and reputation with key stakeholders such as employees, customers and regulators. And finally, they might also increase their own resilience to managing business disruption through building climate considerations into their planning processes. Another important concept in the consideration of climate risk um, for businesses is the perspective of materiality. So materiality refers to the consideration of what will impact the business um, and what will be most important for the business, but also what will impact the planet as well. 
So you'll see in this diagram taken from the European Commission's guidance that there are both considerations from a materiality perspective for those risks that a company may experience, but also that the risks of the climate might be considered as well. And these are both important perspectives for businesses to consider when they're determining what are material issues for them to report upon to their stakeholders. However, another thing that's really important to note is that the TCFD perspective is particularly looking at that company materiality. So this is the risks and impacts that the company itself will experience as a result of climate change, as opposed to its own impact on the climate. So while both issues are really important, it's really key within the TCFD framing to understand that it's specifically looking to consider those risks to the company. And following on from this, another important concept to understand is around the distinction between alignment of a business to global decarbonisation goals and its own understanding of the risks that climate change may bring. So whilst it's really important for a business to align its strategy to global decarbonisation goals, for example, through setting a commitment to net zero, this is distinct from its own consideration of the risks that it will face from climate change. So what's important for TCFD is to think about those risks that will be faced under many different climate scenarios, not just a target scenario, for example, of achieving net zero. So this is an important consideration within the TCFD framing. So with this in mind, it's really important for companies to then disclose this kind of information to their investors so that they can really understand the material climate related issues that the businesses are going to face, how they're managing those and ultimately how this is going to impact upon investors in the long term. So by providing information to investors on climate related financial information, companies can ensure that investors are able to mobilise financing that's needed to deliver the Paris Agreement. In turn, this is going to allow investors to price climate related decisions into their valuations of companies and to shift capital towards those businesses that are responding most effectively to climate change. There are also quite a number of benefits that companies themselves can experience from providing this information. For example, internally, they can save costs, improve their strategic resilience, identify potential new business opportunities and improve their communication between board and management. With their external stakeholders, they may also see improved access to capital, improved engagement with their investors, better preparedness for future emissions regulations and reporting, and more broadly, improve their reputation with other industry peers and leaders. So to conclude this section, we'd like to ask you a quick question, which we'll go through the answer afterwards shortly, to test your understanding of what we've covered so far. So which of the following examples would you say are climate related financial risks? And you can select multiple answers here that you think might be correct. So firstly, reduced demand for products and services or increased costs due to extreme weather damage, lower costs due to reducing energy consumption or higher rates of taxation due to carbon pricing. So have you had a chance to think about that? we'd like to highlight now what the correct responses would be. So you'll see here in green, the three examples which we would say are correct. And these are all examples of potential climate related financial risks to businesses. The third option of lower costs due to reducing energy consumption is actually an example of a potential climate related opportunity. So that concludes our first section on climate related uh, financial stability and disclosure.